We have a very large group participating in today's webinar. For that reason, we have placed everyone on mute where um, we are able to avoid any background noise issues for those of you participating in a, in a speakerphone environment. However, we do want to ask, uh, answer any questions you may have. So with that, please use the chat dialog in the uh, go to webinar tools on your desktop PC. And pose any questions that you have using that dialog. Today's webinar is titled Using ArcGIS Online for Mosquito Control Management. My name is Ryan Pearson with Electronic Data Solutions. I think I've met many of you who are participating today. Our guest speaker, uh, presenter today is Shane Clark. We're very happy to have him with us. He is the Solutions Engineer Manager with Esri. He will actually be demonstrating uh, for the majority of today's presentation uh, on the use of ArcGIS Online for mosquito control and uh, public health. So with that introduction, let me go ahead and get into this next slide here where I'll do a little housekeeping. This webinar is being recorded. Uh, this will be available for you to review um, at your convenience shortly. In addition to uh, the recorded webinar, we will also be providing you links to some of the story maps that will be used during today's presentation so that you may re review uh, that information as well. As I mentioned, uh, we do want to answer your questions, even though you are on mute at this point. Um, please pose those questions in the chat tool uh, that both Shane and I can see. We'll answer those questions as best we can. At the end of today's presentation, we will also have a Q&A session, a question and answer session. We'll try and answer as many of those questions as possible. I will be following up with each of you individually, not only with a uh, follow-up email, but also by a telephone call, where I may answer your questions at that time as well. So once again, thank you for joining us today. We appreciate your time. This webinar is scheduled to last 60 minutes. Um, the majority of that time will be a, a demonstration of the use of ArcGIS Online for data management, for um, data collaboration, um, for cloud-based GIS services. Uh, for those who do not know, Electronic Data Solutions has developed GIS software specific for mosquito control operations. We've developed the Field Seeker GIS for mosquito control software, which is a product based upon ArcGIS, uh, ArcGIS for server. We have a similar product called Sentinel GIS, which is built upon the ArcGIS for desktop software platform. We are an Esri Gold business partner. The tools we develop, um, the workflows we support are all Esri-based um, services and, and tools. With that, we wanted to introduce or um, further explore the use of ArcGIS Online as an additional set of tools to augment the tools that many of you use already. So many of our customers, many of you on the line, are using our software currently for managing mosquito control operational data. You've made a large investment in our technology. Um, this technology is critical uh, to your daily operation. It's a very sound investment. It's very critical to your daily operations. Uh, as a customer, you often collaborate with adjacent agencies. Um, if you're one mosquito control district in a state, you may be working on projects together collaboratively with an adjacent mosquito control district. Um, I put here that health threats do not, uh, do not recognize boundaries. Um, this is true in not only uh, uh, disease surveillance activities, but also in uh, larger mosquito control operations, whether it be uh, large area larvae sighting or adult sighting. This collaboration is very important to many agencies, and um, oftentimes this collaborative effort is, is a, a very difficult thing to undertake. So sharing this GIS data is uh, very problematic, especially if you're trying to do it very rapidly. Today, 
the demonstration of the ArcGIS online software solution um, services solution will actually show how this GIS data sharing and data collaboration uh, quandary can be uh, can be addressed very easily. So ArcGIS Online, for those unfamiliar with it, I just want to provide a, a quick introduction to what some of the capabilities are. Shane Clark from Esri will demonstrate some of these tools. ArcGIS Online is a service from Esri, a cloud-based technology service from Esri that's accessed at the website called ArcGIS.com. It's a service available to all current Esri customers using desktop or server-based software tools. ArcGIS Online supports um, hosting data, uh, hosting maps, hosting your application and other software tools. Uh, ArcGIS Online allows you to quickly author maps uh, using online resources and your data, uh, and sharing that map data with other agencies in a selected environment, a secure environment. Uh, you do have the ability to share the, the maps and data to social media as well. Uh, the goal of ArcGIS Online is to uh, leverage the GIS technology that you're using, making the data available to many users, especially everyone in the organization. And uh, part of the presentation today, we'll look at some executive management tools, sometimes called the dashboard. Uh, so Shane's planning to show a brief introduction to some of that capability as well. So those who uh, have joined us um, late, I just wanted to uh, welcome you to today's webinar. We're very excited to have you here with us today. Um, we have placed everyone on mute uh, simply because there is a very large group participating in today's presentation. We do want to answer your questions. So any questions that you do have, please uh, pose them using the uh, chat dialog or the questions dialog in the GoToWebinar tools. With that, um, that's the end of my introduction. What I'm going to do is turn over control of the presentation to Shane Clark, the Solutions Man uh, Engineer Manager at Esri. Uh, Shane, at this time, um, will be discussing and presenting the use of ArcGIS Online for, for uh, public health and mosquito control. Are you there, Shane? Yeah, I'm here. Get this switched over to you very quickly. Okay, so you should be able to see my screen. Can you see it, Ryan? I sure can. Thank you. Okay. Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you um, for joining us this morning. Um, there's, we've, we've got a limited amount of time, and we could actually spend all day talking about ArcGIS Online, so I'm only going to be able to focus on certain aspects of it. Um, but before I get into that, I just want to do to make some, some introductory comments. Um, all of you working with mosquito abatement districts do amazing work. Um, I grew up in South Africa where malaria is still an issue, and so I'm very conscious that um, the fact that malaria doesn't exist in the US is by no accident. It's through the work that you and your colleagues um, and in the past have done. Um, so you do great work. The challenge, I think, uh, would seem to me is um, do, do the public, do the decision makers know about the work that you do? And um, you, you work with a huge amount of data, um, but communicating that to the public and the decision makers um, is a challenge. And I think that ArcGIS Online pr provides a, a really easy to use, powerful tool for actually communicating the work you do um, with other people. Ryan also mentioned the issue of how do you collaborate with adjacent agencies um, uh, with, without spending a huge amount of time and effort. And again, ArcGIS Online, I think, provides some, some really um, easy, powerful collaboration tools. So those are the, the sort of parts of ArcGIS Online that I'm going to focus on. The data that I'm using actually comes from King's uh, Mosquito-based Bateman District in um, Central California, um, so I'm going to be using some of the sample data from there. And then I'll also look at their website, um, just as an illustration of 
um, of, of how you could use ArcGIS Online in a, in a web presence um, to better communicate with the public and your decision makers. So this is some of the sample data from, um, from King's Mosquito Abatement District. Um, just some of it, there's a huge amount of data here. Um, this is being viewed in ArcGIS for desktop. Um, as I mentioned, how to communicate that effectively um, is a huge challenge. So let's just skip um, a little bit and, and look at, at ArcGIS Online from a sort of an overview. Um, I won't go into too much detail. The easiest way I find to get here is if I go to Esri and then I go to um, the website, go to products, go to ArcGIS Online, and there's a whole bunch of information available here. Um, there's different features. Um, a part of ArcGIS Online, if you haven't explored this, if you're new to ArcGIS Online, I would definitely encourage you to explore this. Um, then some apps that come standard with ArcGIS Online. Uh, we're just going to be looking at one of them, the, the dashboard app. Um, there's different ways of getting access to ArcGIS Online. If you have a license, one or more licenses of ArcGIS for desktop, you automatically have an ArcGIS Online subscription. Um, last year uh, uh, at the user conference, is we announced that for every ArcGIS for Desktop license that is current in maintenance, um, we will provide you a free um, account um, into an ArcGIS Online subscription. Um, so for those of you who've got desktop, you already have ArcGIS Online. Um, for those of you who don't, um, it's pretty inexpensive to get started. You can see the different levels that you can access it from here. Um, Another way to look at what ArcGIS Online is and, and does is to go to the ArcGIS.com website um, and there's some more information here about how to make a map, um, some aspects of it. So um, as I mentioned, the, the, the sample data that I'm using comes from the King's Mosquito Abatement District and this is their website and I'm going to give you some sort of suggestions of how I think um, ArcGIS Online could be used to, to more effectively communicate the work you do um, with others. So the first thing I want to do is sign into my ArcGIS Online subscription. Um, I've got a, a, a demo subscription that I use here. And um, I've taken some of the sample data from um, from the King's um, District and actually um, created some content. So if I go to our uh, home page of the subscription, you can see I can actually um, personalize it, customize it um, to show some information. So already you can see that I've got some information here that is available to anyone that I choose to share this with. It doesn't have to be with the public. Um, in this case, I've shared all of, uh, most of this content with the public. Um, so I've got a whole bunch of maps here. If I go to the gallery, um, I've got some, some, a different way of viewing it of these maps, what we call information products that I've created to um, provide information um, to the public. Um, so let me show you um, how, a, a few ways of how you could actually um, start to create a map. If I go to um, my, my Windows Explorer here, you'll see that I've actually got a, a zipped up shapefile um, as well as a CSV file that has some basic activity of our virus in 2000, actually I believe it was um, in July 2013. Um, so I'll show you what the CSV looks like. Um, it's a fairly typical type of spreadsheet. Um, when it loads up, you've got some records, you've got some location. It could be um, – sorry, let me find that up again. Um, the location could be a latitude, longitude.
So here's, here's what the CSV looks like. It's simply got some data. In this case, the location is a latitude longitude. It could be address information. So let's start off by um, creating a map. Um, and, and I'm going to show you a few ways that you can actually do this. Uh, so this way is to start in not just one and create this map. Okay. So I've got a, a um, blank map here. Actually, let's start with a new map. And um, for those of you who've never used ArcGIS Online, um, you you can um, access your own data. There's a whole bunch of base maps that come standard with it. So we're going to be working down in this area over here, somewhere in central California. Um, you can switch your base maps. There's some pretty good imagery that you can actually have. Um, street maps. So let's, let's switch maybe to the street map. Um, all of these are standard part of, of ArcGIS Online. You can also search for data from across the entire ArcGIS Online or just in your organization. So let's, let's go and quickly add that shapefile um, that we're going to add from, from our, our desktop. Um, it has to be a zip type shapefile. And so that's really, really quick and um, pretty easy to do. I've taken a shapefile and now I've got a web map um, that I can actually start um, tuning up that I'm going to communicate to the public or to the targeted audience. Um, let me show you how you can do the same thing from that CSV file. So I'm going to remove that layer. And if I come to my um, CSV file, I can simply drag and drop it into my map. Um, if I had addresses there, it would have opened up a dialog asking me which, which columns have the address and the city and the zip, all of that sort of information. Um, but it's pretty straightforward. So we've got a map um, that we've, we're starting with. Uh, we can actually do some cleanup of this map. We can maybe um, rename this to something that looks a bit more um, user-friendly. Um, remember, you've always got to think about the target audience. Um, these symbols are not necessarily what we want. If you look at the pop-up here, it has a whole bunch of information that people don't really care about. Uh, most people don't care about the, um, the ID or the lat long, that sort of information. So let's start off by um, cleaning up the, the pop-up. We can say that um, in the pop-up we want, um, we're just going to put a title, 2013 Worst Virus Activity. And we want to actually um, populate this um, with a value from one of the fields. In this case, that's all we want. Um, we don't want to display the lat long for this particular map. So we can actually say, um, don't display any attribute information. Save the pop-up. And now we can test our pop-up. And that's all we need um, for information for this particular web map. The whole concept with these, these web maps are very focused information products, not trying to show a huge amount of information, but um, Essentially, you've got to ask yourself, what's the question that I'm trying to answer? And here the question is, what West Nile virus activity was there in 2013? The next thing we can do is um, change some symbols. We're going to do some a thematic map um, using the type. There are two values here, so we can change the symbol. There's a whole palette of symbols that we can actually use. I tend to go for fairly simple stuff. Um, it stands out really, really well. The more complex the symbols, um, the less, the more confusing the map sometimes can be. So, um, so th there's our map. Um, oh, the next thing we want to do probably to is to show the the district boundary. 
um, for this mosquito abatement district. So I've actually gone and added that district boundary to ArcGIS Online that I can now search for this layer. I'm going to search within the organization and I'm going to search for a keyword district. And um, there we see the district boundary that I've actually added. Um, and there's our district boundary. So really simply, um, I've added some layer from a, a spreadsheet or a, um, a CSV file. I've chosen an appropriate um, base map. This base map could be your own data or hosted by ArcGIS Online. I've created um, some meaningful pop-ups, symbolized it in a meaningful way. Um, I've added a district boundary for context. I've got a map that shows and, and answers the question. So let's now set the web map. We're going to call it um, and you want to add some tags so that when people search they can actually find it. We'll start off with those tags, and I'm just going to, in the interest of time, um, copy that. But you want a meaningful description. Okay, so now we've got a map. Um, the next thing we've got to think about is who's the targeted audience um, that we actually want to communicate this, or said differently, um, how are people actually going to discover this information? Well, one way to do it is we can actually share it um, to the public. So if they search it using those keywords, they'll find it. Or we can actually share it into um, a group um, that we've created. So let's see what that looks like. If we come back to our home page, we can now see this map that we've just created and people can actually access this map. We could also see this map from the gallery. Um, there's the map we've just created. So I can open this and that would be one way um, that people actually would be able to access that map. But another way, um, arguably a more effective way, is to also um, em embed this in the web page. So if I go to um, the King's um, District web page, they've actually got a page here on current West Nile virus activity. And you'll see they've got a PDF map um, that shows something very similar to the map we've just created. Now this PDF map is, you know, has its use, um, but it's not interactive. And if I wanted to know um, what address is this particular point at, um, it would be next impossible to actually know that. Um, so, you know, it has its use, but today a far more effective way of communicating is with an interactive web map. So let me show you how you can actually do that. Um, from this web map, if I go to the share option, um, once I've shared it to the public, I've got an option of embedding it in the web page. Or I could actually share it via Facebook. If you've got a Facebook um, page, you can share it via there. I can um, tweet it, um, or I can um, send that URL to people, or I can embed it in this website. So if I click on here, um, I'm given a few options um, to, to actually um, embed or generate the code that will embed it in a web page. So these are some different controls I can add to it. I want a, um, a Zoom control. I maybe want a legend. I want people to be able to search for the location, um, show the current base map, and actually the size that I want is actually a custom size. Um, since I did some testing on this um, previously, that's the size that I want. So as you can see, it's generated all the HTML code for me. I don't need to know anything about HTML. Um, so what I'm going to now do is take that code, I've copied it, and I'm going to um, show how you could actually um, embed this really easily in the web page. 
So I'm just going to use a tool that's in Google Chrome um, that allows me to uh, mock up um, embedding it in the web page. So if I open these developer tools, I can simply um, find out where I want to put it, and I want to put it probably there, and then I can um, Let's see if this is going to work. Um, I'm going to copy that code into the web page. And now we've got a embedded web map um, in, in our web page. Um, really, really quick. As you can see, the entire process has taken me 10 minutes at the most to actually create this map, um, send this code to our, our web page developer, and this this web page is all interactive. Um, we can do change the base maps, and um, we should be able to get some pop-ups on what these mean, and we can look at the legend. Really, really. Um, easy to actually do. So I, I hope you would agree that um, having a interactive web map in your website is a far more effective way of communicating um, to, to your audience than having a static um, PDF map. Now that's not to say that there's no need for these um, PDF maps because they provide a snapshot of the history um, that this dynamic map won't really do that um, if this data is changing on a regular basis. So it's not a, a um, either or type situation, I don't think. I think one should aim for both of those. Okay, so that's our um, uh, one example of how you can actually use ArcGIS Online. Let's go back to, um, to desktop. I've got a, a different MXD that I've actually created here. And I want to show you another way of how you can very easily create um, content and information products in ArcGIS Online. Here's a, a MXD that has um, some um, service request locations. It's a sample data set, so there are very few of them, um, but it should illustrate the point. I actually want to um, take this, and um, my end goal is going to be to dis um, create this dashboard um, for managers to use to to have a view on um, what's the status of all these service requests. So that's the end goal. Um, so the first thing I want to do, I've got this data, I actually want to publish it as a service, a hosted service in ArcGIS Online that I can build web maps and applications around it. So if I go to File, um, the first thing I want to do is actually um, sign into ArcGIS Online. So I'm going to sign in here using my ArcGIS Online credentials. So it's busy signing me in. The next thing I want to do is go to the file, share as, and I want to share this as a service. Um, I'm going to publish a service, and it up that this is my ArcGIS subscription I'm subscribed to. Um, if you have an ArcGIS server, you could also publish it there, but we're going to publish it to our um, ArcGIS Online service. Um, the next thing um, you want to do is, is go through some of these properties and capabilities. Um, probably the first thing you want to do is um, check this feature access. We want that. We don't want a tiled mapping access. Make sure that all your information, all your descriptive information is complete. In this case, it's just pulling this descriptive information from my MXD and my layers. So I, if I enter it once, I don't need to enter it again. Now before we publish, we actually want to analyze our map to see if there are any errors or any issues 
um, that may impact the publishing. And we, at the bottom here, we get this issue that says um, it's got some base maps that we, we need to remove from our MXD before we publish it. That's pretty simple. I just click that button. Um, it will remove the base maps. Or I can remove them this way. And then once those space maps are removed, I can reanalyze. That looks good, and I can now publish this. So now it is packaging up this data, which is currently a local file geo database on my um, PC, um, and it is sending the information across to ArcGIS Online, where it's going to create a service um, in ArcGIS Online. So it should um, take just a couple of seconds to complete. It will also um, it will create the service. Um, it will populate it with some of that descriptive information um, that we that we had um, already in there. Um, just give it a few seconds to complete here. Okay, so the service is now finished. If I go back to my um, ArcGIS Online um, content page, my content, we should see the service that we've now created. Um, if I click on this, you can see what's created today. Um, and what we can do is open this. You'll notice all the symbology is all there. Um, if I click on this, there's some pop-up information. Um, I'm just going to leave this up um, information as it is. What you should be doing is actually cleaning this up um, to make it more useful um, for the target audience as we did. Um, that all looks good. Uh, we probably want to also add that district boundary. to this map. Uh, what happened there? Okay, I'm not sure uh, why there seems to be some internet issues at the moment, but there's our map. The next thing we want to do is to save this map, and we will just call it um, service request. Um, Okay, so now we've got our, um, our district boundary, um, we've created our map with the service requests, and I will shortly show you how that all comes together in our, in our dashboard. Um, actually, let's go to that dashboard straight away. Um, if I come back to, um, to my content, you will see um, our web map that we've just created. Now, um, the dashboard is actually an application that comes with your subscription. This is a dashboard that I created um, the other day that has um, the service request that you could actually um, use to for your managers or for anyone who wants a view into what's going on. So let's open this dashboard.
So it's busy loading this dashboard. This dashboard currently is running on my desktop, um, accessing information from Arceus Online. Um, you can also create a view of this dashboard that people can access from a browser. Um, from a browser on any device, whether it be a PC, a Mac, a tablet PC or a tablet, a iOS, iPad, Android tablet, iPhone, whatever. So you can access this dashboard from pretty much any device. Um, you can actually, these are all widgets, all of these, these components here are widgets that you can add. Um, so for example, here I've got a whole bunch of information. Um, I can remove layers from here that um, I don't want to see at the moment. And now I can see as, as a manager, I can see um, the activities that we had with West Nile virus and our current um, service requests. Um, this is the map that we've got here. I can actually click on these and get some additional information about it. Um, what I can also do is Um, view, view it from this point. Let's just clear the, the selection. And this here on the widget on the left hand side shows only the open um, assigned or the um, pending service requests. Um, we can actually filter out from the map here. I've created some filters that will show only the active service requests and you can see that these widgets all get um, refreshed automatically. Down here I've got the total number of service requests that are currently being shown on the map. So in this case it's only the the, um, the non-closed service requests. This widget down here shows the um, categorization of these. So of the six service requests I can actually very, very quickly see that um, one is pending review. Maybe that's something that I actually, as a manager, um, need to actually do some work on. Um, two are open and three are assigned. So I can go to any of these. I can look at this one and say, I wonder, um, I wonder where that one is, and um, I wonder what's happening with that, and I can look at the information on that. So this is a, a very simple dashboard in one way, um, but another sense it's actually a fairly complex dashboard um, that would have previously taken a significant amount of programming development expertise and time to actually develop. Um, it took me an hour or so yesterday to, to develop this. It's pretty easy to do. Um, if I go into the um, edit mode, um, there's a whole bunch of widgets that I can actually add. So if I click on the Add Widgets, I can add a whole bunch of widgets um, onto here. Um, multiple um, widgets at, at one time. So um, this can actually work on multiple screens. Um, so for example, this is a bar chart widget. This one on the bottom right is a, um, a summary widget. I've got a legend widget on the top right. And then um, the top left is a list widget. Every one of these widgets can actually be configured. So I can go here, for example, and I can configure this widget. Um, what sort of statistics do I want to see? Um, how do I want this widget displayed? Very, very powerful, very easy to use. Um, as I mentioned, this actually can be run on a, on a uh, mobile device. So I, as a manager, could actually be in the field um, actually managing uh, my um, my activities um, or I could be one of these um, these people actually um, servicing or, or doing these these requests and um, so I could filter this to show only the request the open service requests that are assigned to me and so this would become a very easy to use tool of managing my workload every day so that's how that um, service request uh, map that we created could be easily used. Um, let's go back to, to thinking about how we can communicate um, to, to, to different audiences. If I go back to the web page here, to the home page, um, I think it would be really useful if we showed a bunch of information in here 
these information products that are available on the home page here, um, it would be really useful if we could have the same sort of film strip um, and have them in in the um, in the home page. And that's also very easy to do. If I go to um, this group that's, that I've created, and I open this group, um, you can see that there's um, some information products that I've created. Um, just as we did with embedding that web map, we can actually share here share a gallery of these. We can either make a separate a application of this gallery and, um, and preview it or, or publish this gallery and send people to it. Or what we could do is we could do the same thing that we did for the embedded web map. We can create a, um, some HTML code that we can easily embed in this web page. So I'm not going to do it now in the interest of time, but just as we embedded that web map in the one web page over, over here, we can actually embed this film strip of information products in different formats by simply inserting the HTML code. Um, when, it talks about, or when we talk about collaboration, uh, how, how does that work? Well, a number of ways. If I go to my content, um, you'll notice that I've got a variety of content. I've got these feature services. These are hosted services that have my data or our data that's available to anyone who I share to um, um, share it or choose to share it to. So if we took those, um, uh, let's go and take our, our mosquito sites, uh, this layer. Um, I can actually share this to groups, and these groups, um, the members of these groups can be in my ArcGIS Online subscription, or the members of these can be in other um, subscriptions. So an adjacent um, organization or Mosquito Bacon District can actually join one of my groups, and we can actually share content that way. So that means that whenever someone searches for this information, they can easily load our data to their web map and collaborate that way. Another way of, of sharing is with story maps. So, you know, one of the things that I think you, um, the challenge for all of us in, in GIS is how do we effectively communicate um, with our targeted audience. So one really powerful way of doing it is with story maps. And if you're not familiar with story maps, I really would encourage you to go to um, the the Esri Story Maps web page. Uh, sorry, not that page. This page, and there's a number of um, really useful information. And um, there's a gallery of some very interesting story maps um, from all over the world. There's um, a whole variety of different story map templates. Um, this map tour is really popular. Um, there's a, a um, list of points. Um, I'm going to show you how to actually create a tab viewer story map. And so the, the scenario that we're going to be using is um, we want to share with our audience, with our targeted audience, the work that we're actually doing. So let's go back to my content. And this particular story map, I want to start off with a um, uh, with with a web map, and then we're going to be adding some additional web maps to it. So let's start off with this web map of um, of the West Nile virus activity from last year or from, yeah, from last year. So I'm going to open this web map. And I want to share it uh, 
uh, wrong button. I want to share it, and instead of using the embedded website, I'm going to make a web application. There's a whole number of template web applications. Some of these are story maps, some of them are not. Um, you definitely want to explore those if, you, if you've not done so. Um, the one we're going to be using is a um, is this one here, the storytelling text and legend. So let's just publish this. and go to the item. We want to fill out all this information. If we click on the edit button, we can um, change the thumbnail, the descriptions, all this information. Um, but let's show you how to configure this. I click the configure app here. And there's our uh, initial um, application. Well, what we actually want to do is um, is change the title, make it maybe more meaningful. Um, save that. Um, now this this particular template allows us to have multiple tabs and what we want to do is show to our target audience the work that we do. This is the activity that we had last year and by the way we do a whole bunch of other work um, to, to mit mitigate or reduce this sort of activity. So for this story map it actually requires different um, web IDs, web map IDs. So if we go back to um, to my content over here Let's sign in again quickly. And go to my content. We're going to add um, two additional um, web maps into this. We're going to look at the um, inspections that we had. Um, I've already got this web map. Notice at the top there's a unique ID. This is the ID that I want in my story map. So I'm going to have the activity and then I'm going to have the inspections. I'm just copying and pasting that uh, that web map ID. Um, I'll go back to my content and we're going to put in the treatments. So there's that ID, and um, we can add labels for the tab. So we're going to have um, 2013, or we're going to have um, So now I've got a story map that's starting to be built out that has um, the work that we're actually doing. Um, it has the activities that we did, the inspections that we've done, and the treatments that we've done. And you can actually um, adjust all these descriptions as, as you please. So we've done with this. Let's look at what it would look like um, for the end user. We can open this application. So we've got a simple story map that didn't take us long to create that, is, that effectively communicates um, the work that we're actually doing. Um, this sort of story map can be used to educate the public, to educate decision makers, or when you're um, asking for additional funding. Um, these story maps have proved to be um, pretty powerful in demonstrating that we're effectively um, using the funding that you're giving us. 
we can see all the activities, we can see the inspections that we've done and the treatments that we've, that we've done. So just in, in, in conclusion then, this is a really quick tour, if you like, of some of the aspects that you could be thinking about um, using RTS Online um, for, for your work. Um, when I look at a lot of customers who've got RTS Online, um, it's, it's very rare that um, customers are actually taking advantage of the capabilities that RTS Online um, allows you to actually use it as a mapping platform to effectively communicate with your audiences, um, public, internal, decision makers, um, to collaborate with others. Um, I, th I think it really is a powerful tool. So that's, that concludes my presentation. Um, we've, we've got a few minutes for some questions and answers. Um, I don't know, I, I'm not seeing any questions in, in the chat. Does anyone have any questions that we you would like to be answered? There are there are three questions, Shane, here that I'll I'll pass along to you. Okay. Um, can you please explain the um, the license parameters for ArcGIS? Uh, who qualifies for ArcGIS Online and what capabilities they have? Uh, you talked about it briefly at the beginning, but they'd like some more clarification on that. Okay. So um, let's go back to the the web page. Um, there's, there's essentially two ways that you can get ArcGIS Online. The first way is if you own a license of ArcGIS for desktop, whether it be at the basic standard or advanced level, you automatically, and you're current in maintenance, you automatically um, were given an ArcGIS Online subscription um, last year. And every time you renew your maintenance, um, that subscription will be renewed. So um, many of our customers have not taken advantage of that. Um, if you need help, um, contra contact our um, customer service, and they'll be glad to help you to activate that. Um, if you need help in actually configuring your, your subscription, contact Electronic Data Solutions, and that's one of the services that they provide. They'll be glad to help you with that. So that's the first way is many of you um, already have it. There's no need to, um, to purchase anything additional to get started. However, um, you may want to add more users to your subscription, or you may not have an, an RTS um, for desktop license, in which case you can actually purchase RTS online um, organizations in different levels. So um, she has a five user level, it's a subscription service, so it would be um, 2,500 per year um, for five named users. Um, and you can see the information there. So um, a follow-up question to the one you just answered, Shane. Um, what's the relationship? Is this, a, if you will have one license of ArcGIS for desktop, do you have one? user account at ArcGIS Online? Correct. Okay. So it is a one-to-one -one relationship in that respect. Correct. Now, I, I think you have to um, uh, really focus on on what the power of ArcGIS Online is all about. The uh, ArcGIS Online is not only intended for GIS people. It's really intended for GIS people to actually make their data available to the rest of the world, whether it be in your organization or in your community um, or the public at large. Um, now, any time you are sharing any content that you share to the public, you do not need to have a user account to access that. So everything that I created today, the story maps, if I share it to the public, um, the public can access it without having an account. The only time you need an account is if you want to share it to someone but not share it to the public. So maybe you've got some sensitive information that you want to share only within your district. Um, well, in that case, 
um, everyone who needs to access that information would need a named account. Perfect. Thank you. Um, another question. Um, do these hosted services uh, access live data, or is it a snapshot of the data at that time? Okay, that's a good question. Um, the hosted services are live data, so it's it's roughly equivalent to an ArcGIS online an an ArcGIS server service, except it's running in the cloud. Now those services are disconnected to your data on your in your premise in in, in your organization. Um, there's two ways of doing it. In some cases, it just makes sense to keep the data in the cloud in ArcGIS Online. There's no need in some instances to have it locally um, on your on your own PC. Have it in, in ArcGIS Online as a service. In some cases, um, you may want to um, synchronize your data. So you may want to have a local copy um, and synchronize that um, at regular intervals with your service in ArcGIS Online, and there are ways to do that. It does not happen automatically, but there are some scripts available to actually do that. Excellent, thanks. Um, one other question that came in, um, what kind of reporting functionality is included in ArcGIS Online? Okay, so um, can that person clarify a little bit about what they mean by reporting? So there are lots of ways of talking about reporting. Um, if you want to clarify while I'm talking, you're welcome to do that. So one way is um, is looking at what's happening in my in my system. Um, how are people using it? And we provide some reporting tools there. So, for example, I can look at a certain amount of information on this subscription. Um, these are all about um, credit usage. Another way is if I go to um, we've got an application available. that allows you to do some more detailed reporting on the user level. Um, let me just... I think in uh, this instance, uh, uh, the, the user is asking about some, uh, replicating some of the reports we might have in our desktop software, such as uh, um, number of inspections, total number of inspections, completed inspections. That's some of the same, same information that we saw in the uh, dashboard. Is there a way to generate okay. a tabular report? Okay. okay, got it. So that's a reporting. There's nothing um, out of the box. Um, um, bear in mind that you can, these, these hosted services and these web maps can actually be opened in ArcGIS for desktop. So you can access them that way. Um, if you're wanting something more custom, um, you probably would need to build some sort of custom application. Okay. But I, I would really be interested in knowing some more details on what sort of reporting you're looking for. And um, if you get that to, to Ryan, he can pass it on to me, and I will forward that to our development team, and I can get back to you on, on, on what our plans are in that area. Okay. Um, we had one question from uh, uh, one attendee. Uh, they're interested in, in kind of watching how you got in back into where that summer screen was, summary screen was showing the number of remaining credits. Yeah. Uh, how did I get there? Yeah. How did you get there? So um, this, my organization, um, this button here um, is only accessible if you. Well, some of these tools are only accessible if you're an administrator in the organization, which I am. Um, I click on my organization, I can see some users. 
I'm an administrator, so I can do anything right now in this organization. And this view status um, shows the credit usage. Um, you know, just this is a demonstration um, uh, subscription that um, we use a, a significant amount um, for demonstration purposes, training, that sort of thing in, in our region. Um, in the US, a credit is 10 cents. So in the last, in, um, this month so far, it's cost us $20 to run this subscription. And um, for these $20, We've got a huge amount of data that we're actually storing. We've got 1.6 gigabytes. Actually, that's the bulk of the cost. Um, we've got a huge amount of services that we've created for demonstrations, training. Um, you know, it's 1.6 gigabytes of, of features that cost us um, so far $20 this month. And you can see the rest of the credit usage is is almost nothing. Yep. That answers the question. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, that's the end of the, well, there is one more question. Um, for those who did join late, this webinar is recorded and will be available for viewing at your convenience uh, this afternoon uh, from our webpage. I'll send out a, an email to all the attendees where you may uh, um, view this this recorded webinar. That does uh, answer the questions that were posed during your demonstration, Shane. I really appreciate that. Uh, you're welcome. Thank you very much. Um, I do have a couple slides left if you want to transfer that back over to me, Shane. Um, yeah, you should say that. Yeah, what a tremendous job you did, and I really appreciate that, um, demonstrating the functionality of RTS Online, how it can uh, be leveraged by any organization to really um, not only work collaboratively with other agencies, but make this data available to tell a story, um, to show the work that's being done, uh, to provide value to those who you serve. So with that, I just want to provide a quick summary before we finish today. Um, as you saw through the demonstration, these RTS online tools are very valuable. Uh, they are available to any current Esri software user who is current with maintenance. Uh, we saw a tremendous, tremendous demonstration of how the tools can be used collaboratively and how the data can be shared. Um, and, uh, how the tools can be used for project manage management and uh, distribute that GIS data throughout the organization, making it available to the people who uh, can use it to make decisions and, and help uh, manage the operation overall. So how, how can electronic data solutions help? Uh, as as uh, Shane mentioned, uh, we do have a professional services group within our company that are available to help with the configuration of the ArcGIS online environment to set up these, uh, these different projects uh, to help uh, establish a workflow that you may be using um, within your organization and to engage the public. So our professional services include the configuration of the RTS online environment, uh, providing project services um, that could be uh, not only involved with RTS online, but other projects you may be involved with. Uh, a big part of our company is actually software application development. So we can actually work with you on identifying specific needs uh, within your organization and help address those through some software development, typically in the ESRI environment that will fit right in with uh, what you may be doing otherwise. And of course, we do have, offer training and technical support. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about our professional services and uh, uh, what we can help, uh, how we can help your organization, please give us a call at the number listed below. Um, We've gone through uh, uh, the question and answer session already. I will be sending a follow-up email to each of you, uh, showing a link to those, the storyboard.esri.com webpage where you can look at a lot of uh, ways people are sharing data using ArcGIS Online tools. Uh, for those who provided a phone number, I will provide a, uh, I will follow up with a personal follow-up call, provide you with links to the webinar that's been recorded, this webinar, 
And uh, our contact information is found here on this last page, including Shane's email address at Esri. If you have questions about any of his demonstration today, you may contact him there. My information is here as well. Uh, and you can contact me at the number that you see at the top, that 208-324-8006. With that, I just wish to thank each of you for participating today. Uh, thank you, Shane, so much for, for uh, your valuable insight for demonstrating these software tools. It was uh, tremendous and greatly appreciated. Uh, with that, I'll be talking to each of you uh, here shortly. I'll be able to answer any further questions you may have. Um, we do appreciate your time and participation. Have a good day. Thank you, everyone. Goodbye.